uh, there are some mistakes made. Um, the, the real common mistake on the last part of the second page was that's six centimeters. So you got to change that to 0.06 because everything is in meters. So we, our formulas only work in meters. And um, the elastic potential energy in the spring before the collision is just sitting there in equilibrium. Nothing is happening to it. It can't do any work. So that should be zero. Uh, the first one was 937.5. A lot of you forgot to square. I, I kept getting this answer of 75. I was going, where is everyone getting 75? They were, you were doing the momentum of the thing and not the energy of the thing. Three times, three times 25. And I went, oh, that's where they're getting it. And a lot of people got 37.5. Were they getting 37.5? They forgot to square the velocity. All those little things just come back to, to um, that's, that's all test anxiety things. And then problem three was okay. Most people do all right on problem three. Problem four and five caused all kinds of heartache too. Um, a lot of you forgot that Miranda was also part of the before in jumping on, you know, she has a kinetic energy. The little girl, Ashley, on the, on the sled has a kinetic energy before. And then when Miranda jumps on her, they've got a kinetic energy afterwards. And w after she jumps on her, because momentum's concerned, but the kinetic energy isn't, her uh, velocity, their velocity together was 3.6 meters per second. And it came out to be like 800. 99 joules is greater than 839 joules on the other side. If or if, um, and you had to, and those were kinetic energies. And on the second one, I felt sorry for some of you because you forgot on your cheat sheet to write down what the formula is for the collision of an an elastic collision. Okay, and and you got into this nightmarish thing of trying to solve two equations, two unknowns, when one of the unknowns is a square. Is that one half? You understood that the momentum before is going to equal the momentum after, and since it's elastic, so is the kinetic energy. But you got into the algebra bugaboo of, and it was ugly. I was like, oh my, your cheat sheet wasn't complete. Um, and uh, so I put it in there for you what the formula was. Well, day late and a dollar short if you've already taken the test. But anyway. Um, and then on the last problem, we're going to talk more about that today. That was kind of a, um, I think some of you overthought it. You, you were going, wait a minute, wait a minute. All semester long, the acceleration due to gravity on the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. However, this is a satellite way off into space, way off into space, okay? And so you got a new R, and I think we went over the G. It was G, mass of the Earth, divided by R squared. Some of you stuck in the, the mass of the uh, satellite, which we didn't really need. We could find the force on the satellite, which would be that mass times um, the acceleration. So anyway, so there's, there's that. For the most part, it's only 5% of the grade, so it's not a big deal. And Ms. Torito said she wouldn't be here today. But she said, hey, I want to see my homework grades. Well, I'm going to get that done. I promise. By Thursday, you will have homework grades so you can see, you can get a better picture of what your grade is. And most of you should be doing fine in lab. Okay? So no scowling. I know labs, I know you got into something in lab this week that we're still too, ah, forever Rachel Young. Here you go. There you go. Um, that we're still, uh, we're still like three class periods behind there, or, or one. We'll, we'll go over some of it today. Um, but basically, all it is is instead of going in a straight line, you're just looking at accelerations going around in a circle. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay? So how many, your lab was due, you've already turned it in, right? Oh, due tomorrow. Due tomorrow. All right. Um, Well, I, I, I think I'll be able to show you some of it because I've had some people come in and say, this lab is killing me. But one thing about the labs, your lab professor, your lab instructors will take care of you. Who's your, your all's lab instructor on Wednesday night? Who? Oh, Ken the Barbarian? Okay. Um, 
he's got your back. He'll be good. He, he's, he's, he's sent me, the, and I've seen the grades. Oh, I could look them up. He sent them to me, and um, I, think, I think you'll be okay. Everyone will be all right. Okay, so that's it on the test. Let's go through a laser light show here. We're basically going to cover. Ooh, that's mood lighting. <laughs> all right. There we go. We're basically going to cover chapter 7 tonight. What, what I'm going to do is go, we're going to blow through chapter 7. And for 10 years, for, to please her, we're going to blow through chapter 7. And I'm going to stand right here, and we're going to click off slides. All right. Okay. So this is going to be, even though physics, I, I know it's Seema's favorite subject, but um, this is going to be kind of a Bueller. Bueller type thing as we go through the rip through these slides then we'll take a quiz 10 and then what we're going to do is on Thursday uh, we'll start chapter 8 a little we'll finish up chapter 7 but I'm going to give you like eight homework problems you'll see them Wednesday and we'll 8 to 10 and we'll do like five of them in class on Thursday so you understand how to and work them okay and, and so you're, you'll have a new assignment. Physics is like camouflage. It's continuous. It goes on and on and on. All right. So all right. Lecture. Here we go. Slideshow. View. Show. There's, there it is. Physics is fun. You go skiing. All right. Now. Get through. What we're going to talk t about today is uniform circular motion and gravitation. All right, and this, and we're going to start off with uniform circular motion. And what uniform means is going at a constant speed. We're not going at a constant velocity. Why? Because we're changing direction all the time over time. Okay, and that gives us an acceleration. A net acceleration goes straight in towards the center of the circle. All right, now, quick question. Why is this water not spilling on this guy? Speed. What's that? Speed which is the speed at which he's going. James is on to something. It is the speed at which he's swinging it around because the water, the center of mass, even though water doesn't has a kind of a globby center of mass, um, uh, it, it, the center of mass of this thing wants to, keep go, wants to go this way at this point. And the bucket is keeping it from going that way. Now, if all of a sudden he goes up and stops like this, splash, he's going to get wet. But as long as he keeps going, then the water is going to continually wanting to go tangential to the circle with its velocity all the time. Okay? So that's kind of the big idea of that's the deal with this thing. All right? So we're going to talk about angular measure, angular speed and velocity. Um, uniform circular motion, centripetal acceleration, angular acceleration. So, so when we go from uniform circular motion to angular acceleration, that's when all of a sudden we speed up. Okay, um, you all are very acquainted. Any of you ever make margaritas before or a smoothie? Okay, uh, I know Brad has made margaritas. Probably never seen a smoothie in his life. But anyway, no. Um, but anyway. What, what's the main piece of equipment you use for margaritas? A blender, exactly. Okay, so you got a blender, and it and it wrote that that those blades go from zero to a big omega really fast. And we'll talk about omega, the little omega here in a minute, which is the radians per second. All right, and so that's so to go just like we learned in chapter two of something that starts from rest. It ends at 60 miles an hour. It has to have what happen to it? A, an A, right? An acceleration, right? And so same thing here. But this will be an angular acceleration. We'll look at Newton's laws of gravitation, which you can't get through a physics class without at least seeing two things. First semester, you've got to see F equals big G, big M, little m over R squared. And second semester, E equals MC squared is where we kind of end the second semester, all right? So that's the two sub things of all physics classes should cover that. The main thing of physics, though, is you should become a good parent. 
teaches you how to become a good parent. In other words, when the kid asks, when your kids ask you, why is the sky blue, or why is this or that, you can explain it to them, okay? And if you do a real physics explanation of it, they'll never ask you a question again. It's great. All right. Okay. Here's basically the math behind this. It's just the unit circle. That's all it is. Okay. And so the x coordinate, of course, is r cosine theta, and the y coordinate is um, r sine theta. That's um, kind of where we start with this thing. Okay. Now. I want to find out how far it is just along the arc. Just along the arc. Now then, you all know how to do this. If I go from here to here, not displacement, but what's my distance that I went? What's the circumference of the circle? What's, this, what's the, uh, what's that? Two pi times r. Exactly. Okay. So it's 2 pi times r. Where do we get the 2 pi? 2 pi is the number of degrees that you go around. Okay? We're in radians now. Okay? So like if somebody does a great skating maneuver, we call that a 180, right? Because they spun three times. You could be real cool and say, nah, it's a 6 pi. But probably not. Okay. Well, anyway, so... To find that distance s, then, to find the distance s is just the, the radius times the angle. Not in degrees, but we're in radians, OK? In other words, 360 is 2 pi, uh, 180 is pi, um, and stuff like that. Now, don't change your calculators, because we don't, we're not going to be doing any figuring on the radius. Besides, um, we will just work in radians just algebraically, um, and so. Don't change your calculator. And, and these are the uh, conversions. Um, 57.3 degrees is 1 radian. 45 is pi over 4. My wife had um, knee replacement surgery from years of playing um, field hockey in college, field hockey and softball and all that kind of stuff and everything else. Finally caught up to her. And they put him in a machine this machine where they, they keep bending their knee all the time. Yeah, Rashawn is familiar because she's had teammates that have had knee surgeries and stuff like that. He keeps bending their knees. Well, they'd, at 90 degrees, you'd get to go home. You know, they'd be like, okay, you can go home. And so they'd always put like 60 degrees the first day. It's like at 10. But I'd help the nurses out, and I'd erase this and put it in radiance. And they were like, Please, leave the geek hood downstairs. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, anyway, all right. Now, here's, here's something that's kind of useful later on when we get into, when you're talking about great distances. Uh, um, if this angle theta is really small, then the y part is real close to s. It's almost equal to s. And x, this x part, is almost equal to the r to the radius r and using this thing using a really small angle galileo was actually able by using similar a similar triangle argument he put a piece of string he measured the width of the string okay so he got this width and he called that width basically he had the r to the string and this r to the string and got the sun right behind it that angle and he's able to figure out the diameter of the sun by using um, similar triangles. And that calculation is still used today. I mean, it's still spot on accurate. Um, you had time to do that kind of stuff in the 16th century. So, but anyway. So, all right, now we're getting down to brass tacks. Here's what this, art, here's what this chapter is all about. Angular speed and velocity. Ah! Theta minus theta. Theta final minus theta initial. I'm not staying in one spot, am I? Sorry. Anyway, um, these are the radians. In other words, we're going in a circle now. Okay? We're going in a circle. And so we're looking at how the circle opens up over time. All right? And so we've got this little omega here, which gives me this is guy is in radians per second. Because this is radians per second. So 
our angular speed, now I'm not going to ca call it velocity because it's got a, because the, the uh, direction of it is, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I'm pretty much going to say angular speed of things is uh, it's either speeding up or slowing down, um, going clockwise or counterclockwise type thing. All right, and that's what this little omega is. It's the change in the angle divided by the change in time. Okay, so you got this little omega. All right, which always sounded to me like it's the love child of little Kim and 50 Cent or something. It sounds like a little, little bow wow or something. Who is now just bow or wow or something like that. He, he dropped the little part. Okay. All right, now, the angular speed and velocity. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Okay? That's basic. So the, the angular velocity, notice, it's three dimensional. In other words, if we're going around this, the, here's our angular speed is going along the disk, but the velocity vector is going this way. Okay? And if it speeds up, it's got an angular acceleration which if I help this along, it's going to have an angular acceleration. And guess what? That angular acceleration is going to go the same way. So if I spin something, you've all seen this before. If you spin something fast enough, or if you all ever use those fire, fireworks that you nail to the tree, you nail the center of it, you light one in, and it goes like that, what happens sometimes if the nail's not good? It'll come flying straight up at you, or, or you can just set it on the ground and light it, and what happens? It starts spinning. That's that vector that's going up. It spins in that direction, okay? That's what's causing it to, to spin. To, it's got enough force to get it spinning fast enough so that it goes up. If you turn it over, it's going to dig into the ground, not go anywhere. Yes? You don't apply, like, positive or negative to it. Um, yes, you do. Uh, basically, here's the convention. Counterclockwise is positive because... We, we basically say as we're going X cross Y like that, it's a positive Z, and that's counterclockwise. Clockwise, as we go Y cross X, that goes in the negative Z direction, so that's negative. So for our purposes, counterclockwise is positive, and clockwise is negative. But that's for later on when we get to torque, and that's in chapter 8. Okay? But for right now, this is the last time you're going to deal with Velocity with angular velocity. The rest of it's angular speed. Okay, just going in the blue arrow. All right. Okay. Now, here we go. This is a good little equation to know. Now, every Christmas, what happens about starting two weeks before Thanksgiving if you're old and you watch like NCIS? Eventually what happens is, about this time of year, they start having Branson commercials. Christmas and Branson, right? They've started already. Oh my gosh. I can't, I, you know, that, that's my definition of hell. But anyway, um, it's Christmas and Branson. But, um, sorry. Now, the, now this is, this is going to be broadcast of millions, and I'm going to get a call from the Branson Tourist Board. But anyway, but... Who, does, who do they bring? They bring the Rockettes, right? Okay, so here's our Rockettes right here. All right, here's two rocket ladies, and they're hooked. On, well, there's three of them. Here's one in the middle. Here's this one, and this, this is a top view. Um, this is a top view of the Rockettes. Now, have you ever played Crack the Whip when you are little? You know, never played Crack the Whip? No, no one in the other class played Crack the Whip either. Red Rover? Send, okay, Rachel's, okay, send Rachel right over, right. Okay, well anyway, uh, Crack the Whip is when you get somebody at the end and, and someone in the middle is kind of like swinging like this and you're all trying to hold hands and the guy on the end is trying to stay, um, stay, stay hanging on to the other guy. But anyway, if these are the Rockettes, this girl, if they're going to go around this circle, notice the degrees radiant, the radiant degrees between this circle and this circle are the same, okay? The, the number of degrees that they have to cover if they're going to go in a complete circle and stay in line are the same. However, the distance, she's got to go a much greater distance 
in the same amount of time. So she's got a haul, basically, okay? Especially if she's way out at the end. All right, so when they do the, that's why one, that's why they kind of do the thing where the one backs up and this one goes forward so that it's a little easier to do. But if, like in skating or, or anything like that, if you're the end person, because the velocity, the tangential velocity that you have, and this tangential velocity follows you all the way through this path, is equal to the radius times omega. Omega's the same. Omega's the same, no matter where you are on that turntable, okay? But, uh, yeah, let's think of it as a record to, well, y'all don't even have those anymore. So I know you all have never put, like, dimes on a record and watched them fly off the end, have you? No? Okay, all right. Wow, all the fun things we used to do. Anyway, um... Anyway, this person's got to go really fast. The, the thing furthest to the end has to go much faster because the tangential velocity, and when you write this equation in your notes, put a T here. VT equals R times omega. Okay? All right, now, frequency is one over the period. Let's talk about what period means. What's the period of the Earth as it's spinning on its axis? How long does it take to make one revolution? 24 hours, right, yeah. Well, yeah, it's 24 hours. That's the T for planet Earth, okay? But we've got to break that down into seconds, which is 86,400 seconds, okay? Because there's 3,600 times 24, because that's to be 86,400, all right? So that's the T. That's the period. That it takes. And so the, the omega of the Earth is this 2 pi divided by 86,400. That's it. And this frequency, the frequency of the Earth, in other words, per second, it only makes one 86,400th of a rotation every second. Okay? Now then, some things go through a cycle very fast, like the AC, circ AC voltage that we have coming into this building because that's at 60 hertz. Frequency is in hertz. It's one over seconds. Okay? The, that's the frequency. And that's 60. That means 60 times the voltage goes bang, 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 bang in a second. All right? So that's pretty fast. In Europe, it's at 50. That's why their lights are a little bit dimmer and things like that if you're in Europe. Or it looks funny to us. To America. In fact, the United States is the only place that's at 60 hertz. You go anywhere else in the world, it's at 50 hertz. And so all the lighting in buildings looks funny when you're in those places. To us. Because we're not used to that 50 hertz thing. We can almost see it flickering. Kind of. Sort of. All right. So, you got 2 pi times the frequency or 2 pi over t. Okay? It gives you the omega, it gives you the Radians per second, the thing is turning. All right. Now, here they're going into the big algebraic justification for, you got V1 here, V2 here. Now, if I take um, V2, V1, put them, delta V is um, equal to V2 minus V1. Okay, which is my change in velocity. And notice, as it gets smaller and smaller, as I shrink this smaller and smaller, this gets closer and closer to this line so that the AC direction, the net force of something going around in uniform circular motion is AC. The net force is AC. And that equals V squared over R, which I think we get to. Yes, there we go. All right. So let's say we're swinging this basketball, it's on some kind of tether, it's on some kind of rope. Then the tension on this rope is equal to, AC, to the mass of the basketball times AC, because that's the net force that's pushing it towards the center. Okay? All right? And that centripetal acceleration is equal to V squared over R, or R times omega squared since V equals R times omega. 
So the, here's the two equations for the centripetal acceleration that's going towards the center. Okay. Okay, now I want you to kind of visualize something here real quick. I wish I'd have brought something to swing over my head. All right, how many of you have ever taken, oh, like say you got, not a pair of nunchucks, I don't want to go there, but you got a little ball on the end and you swing it over your head type thing, or seen that somebody do that, okay? Oh, you did it in the lab, just in physics lab? Then did you make the rope smaller? Oh, so it spun faster? That it spun faster okay and the tension got the tension actually here is greater when it when it's bigger but it speeds up when you pull it oh you all did that lab okay well anyway did you notice that you can't have it perfectly you can't have a perfectly um, in the XY plane it won't stay there when you're swinging something why because I've also got if this was if I'm swinging around this way Okay, it's got AC going towards the center, a net force going towards the center, but it also has MG. Okay, so there's a little force that's lifting it up that way. That's why everything kind of looks like this instead of like this when it's spinning. All right, because there's got to be a counter force that AC actually counters, a component of it counters that MG force pulling it down. All right, okay, so FC, okay, the centripetal force. Multiplied by the centripetal acceleration, this force is the net force. This is huge on the object. Okay, the force is always perpendicular to the velocity, and it does no work because it's perpendicular to the thing moving. All right, good, 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 good. All right, now here we here. We're gonna get to Brett's blender here. All right, starts out at zero. Right. Puts a little non-alcoholic tequila in there because we got to be politically correct. Or, or let's make a smoothie, okay? I learned how to I learned how to make smoothies a few years ago, and now I just I just like making them. Um, and you know, it saves you eight ninety five from going to Jamba Juice or whatever, you know. Where they, oh, I want a banana smoothie. Okay, that'll be twelve dollars. Oh, thanks. But well, anyway, just take a little yogurt, little orange juice, little banana, a little Blueberries, little strawberries, throw them in there. But right now, what's your blade spinning at? Zero, right? And then you turn it on, okay? You turn it on, it goes from zero to very, very fast, to a very, very fast omega um, over amount of time. So you got to change in omega over change in T. Guess what? You need an angular acceleration too to do that. So we've left uniform circular motion where we had a constant speed in other words omega was constant going around that circle but to now where we've got um, alpha where that's the angular acceleration we're speeding it up uh-oh does this look familiar does this look just like v equals v naught plus alpha times t a t it's the same thing except that one is for linear displacement. This is for going around a circle, okay? This is how fast, this is radians per second equals radians per second plus radians per second squared times time, times seconds, gives you radians per second, okay? All right, good. Okay, now, going to do you dirty here a little bit. Okay, now, if, let's say, all of a sudden, let's go back to this basketball picture. Basketball going around in a corner. Oops, there it is. Okay, now, notice this is nice, uniform speed. Notice these v vector velocities are all the same. Well, let's say that this is, all of a sudden, we put a little retro rocket on this thing. All right? shoots a bunch of jet propulsion this way. So for every action, there's equal and opposite reaction. More mass back here pushes this thing. So it's going to go faster that way. All right? That is a tangential acceleration. All right? And that's what they're talking about here. 
all of a sudden we're speeding up that notice we've got an angular we got an angular acceleration so it's got to be speeding up and so we're going to be adding also to the uh, AT we're going to have a tangential acceleration which is just good old delta V over delta T or it equals R omega over delta T which is R alpha is your tangential acceleration and then you put the two together for the total acceleration of the thing which they don't do oh yes they did they did it right here where's my here you go here's here's the overall acceleration of this thing you got AC going straight to the middle this is an instantaneous thing that's happening here because it'll be different why does my arrow keep disappearing okay but anyway it'll be different at this juncture over like over here if it continues to accelerate a will be much bigger it'll be coming to, oops coming down like that anyway all right ooh nightmares from chapter two coming back to haunt you here they are nightmares now in chapter seven so if these are angles these are the radian angles that you're opening up by covering a distance linear all right Okay, here we go. Newton's law of gravitation. This is huge. This was on our test. I just kind of threw it on there and told you what it was. Um, we didn't really explain it or anything. All right, Newton was like, hey, by the way, him sitting under the apple tree and getting mocked on the head, that's kind of, that's in there with the George Washington and the cherry tree. Okay. Didn't happen, but it's a nice little story we tell our children and everything. So with all the other, you know, category with the Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, all those. But anyway, all right. Then they have to unlearn everything when the, once they become adults. All right, anyway, um, we've got, uh, he noticed that two masses attract each other. They've got a force between each other. And it was directly proportional to M1, to the two of them multiplied together. And he also noticed that the further apart that he got them, they were inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart from their centers of mass. Okay? We still don't know why that is. Why there's a force there between two masses. We don't understand why there's an attractive force between, like, Greg and Blake. It's weird. Okay, that they got too mad, but they're so small, you can't feel it. All right? You need something huge to actually feel it, like the Earth, so we can actually feel it. We don't know why. Do we? Tingy, do we know why? Do we? we don't know why gravity works. We just know it works. By experiment, so far, it's worked every time. Okay? Um, so, if you want to get your work on your... N Nobel laureate in physics figure out why gravity works all right um, they're getting close they think there might be these little graviton things but it's a very very weak force it's a very very weak force compared to the electromagnetic forces compared to the strong nuclear forces okay which y'all take chemistry taking chemistry it holds everything together those electromagnetic forces and the, st and, the, and the strong nuclear force even the weak nuclear force all right, gravity is very weak compared to those things. All right, but anyway, this is the biggie. This gravitational constant G. So he found out that it's directly proportional to m1 times m2 divided by r squared. But in all his calculations, the slope of his line, just like you all get in all your when you go to lab, you get the slopes. Well, Newton didn't have a nifty Pasco computer doing that for him. But anyway, he figured out he's going. Oh, I need a slope to this line. And the slope to the line turned out to be g to make it all work, which is that 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 in squared, or in meters squared, kilogram squared. So these kilograms squared cancel, these meters squared cancel, and you're left with good old Newtons. And you're done. All right. Okay. And so gravity provides a centripetal force that keeps planets, moons, and satellites in their orbits. And we can relate the universal gravitational force to the local 
acceleration of gravity. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry, I, I was thinking something else. Um, I think you all had, didn't you have on one of your labs three weeks ago or four weeks ago? Didn't you have, if you're standing on the equator, what's your weight? Aren't you lighter on the equator than you are at the poles? Because of that mv squared over r, that centripetal force, which is when you're standing on the poles, you've got this net centripetal force that's pulling you in. Okay? If you're standing on the pole right here, if you're standing on the equator right here. If you're standing up here, you don't have that mv squared over r net force. And so just n equals mg at that point. But here, you had mv squared over r equals n minus mg. And so your mg is equal to mg, um, uh, n is then would be equal to mg minus the mv squared over r. That's one thing I like about having the screen down. I just said a bunch of algebra things without writing them down. But don't worry about it. Okay. Now, this is one reason I, I adopted this physics book, because I like this idea of potential wells for physics. Because we talk about them all the time. We talk about um, electric potential wells. We talk about hydrogen atoms, quantum mechanics. One of the basic things you have to do is you always have, um, you got a hydrogen uh, or an electron in a potential well. And how is it going to get out of there and everything else. All right, so here we got the same thing with the gravitational potential um, well that's taking place here. Here is, believe it or not, here's MGH. Okay, here's MGH, just written in a different form. All right, now what this is telling me is since this is negative, for me to get up out of here, I need to do positive work to overcome it. Okay, in other words, I got to lift things up out of there. All right, to, to overcome this thing. And as R um, as, uh, is it's proportional to, to the negative 1 over R, but as R goes to infinity, then my um, potential, my gravitational potential energy becomes, but the pot gravitational potential energy becomes zero. All right, so that's how I can figure out my escape velocity of something. All right, in other words, I set one half mv squared, my max kinetic energy, equal to this guy, and I can find that v. Foom, and I get out of space. Okay, all right. Kepler's laws. We're not going to talk about them. They're, they're cool. They're, they're neat stuff. Um, uh, basically, here's uh, uh, Kepler's planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun at one of the focal points. Okay, um, it, it gets into all that elliptical algebra um, and all that kind of stuff, and they still work. In other words, it takes the same amount of time to go for this S1 as it did to do this S2, okay? They sweep out equal to A1 is equal to A2, okay? In other words, the amount of time it took for it to go here to here, amount of time it took for it to go there to there, equal at the same time, they swept out the same area, those kinds of things. T squared, okay, yeah, yada, yada, yada. Here we're getting into escape velocity. This is what I was saying earlier. So that's the way we do that. All right, now, I want to talk about one quick thing. What's the new, what's the new space probe out there? We got Voyager or Viking or something. Any of you all up on that stuff? No? <sighs> what's wrong with you people? No, kidding. Um, well, anybody see the first Star Trek movie? Came out in 1979. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, in the first Star Trek movie, way back in the 70s, you know, this this happened like in Star Date 5641 or whatever it happened to be, and um, this V'ger thing came back. This Voyager spacecraft came back. All right. And back in the 70s, we we launched this Voyager that was supposed to. What happened? Oh, I got tethered to this thing. All right. That was weird. Anyway, um, 
this this Voyager we launched this Voyager spacecraft in the 70s. Okay, now what is it's on its way to Pluto. I think it's already taken pictures of Saturn, if I'm not mistaken. It's already gone around. It's made it to Saturn. It took about 30 years to get there. Now the way it moves, it doesn't have like a nuclear reactor on it driving it because that'd be too heavy, be too big, all right? And it doesn't have um, gas, you know, or some kind of fuel. What it does is it has a few little retro rockets, okay, that actually, when it comes in, it gets into the gravity, well, all right, have y'all seen the movie Whip It? The new movie with Drew Barrymore and what's her name from Juno? Y'all haven't seen that? Because there's no difference between the way we shoot satellites and roller derby. There's the same thing, same principle, all right? So what happens is the satellite gets into the gravitational pull of the planet, goes around, shoots a little retro rocket that gives it its es escape velocity, which the escape velocity of the Earth is seven miles per second. That's quick. My, my driveway from, from the parking lot to my driveway is like 21 miles, all right? So I could get home in three seconds if I was going to escape velocity of the Earth. All right, uh, so space shuttle, when it's taken off and it leaves, um, it, it's getting up to seven miles per second. That's fast. Whew. All right, and um, anyway, and so it, it escapes, it, it escapes the Earth. Now, as it comes, gets close to, what's the next planet, Mars? As it comes in close to Mars, it goes around, gets into its, it gets into its elliptical orbit, Fire a few little retro rockets, whew, using the gravitational pull of the planet, just like a slingshot, sends it on its way. Okay? Yes? So it's eventually going to run out of you know, you use It might, yeah. But, but it, it doesn't take much. What's that? I wonder how it knows to. The computers, they tell it it's all programmed. It's really amazing. It's really an amazing thing. But anyway, it's on its way to Pluto, which is no longer a planet. It got blackballed from the, from the planetary fraternity. But anyway, being too small, you're not a planet. Get out of here, Pluto. Get lost. All right. So anyway, here's the escape velocity, speed. All right. The Earth. All right. Now, is there anything? Okay, this is where we're going to stop, and we'll finish it up later. Let's do our quiz. Let's do quiz 10. It'll be so much fun. Can't wait, can't wait, can't wait. Better big quiz just like all the other quizzes. Okay. Oops. There's the first slide, which is, when do you think the next snow day will be? No. Um, which we actually might have to deal with. All right, here's my policy. We might want to t shut off the television because I could get in trouble with the provost. But, but anyway, here's my policy. I, me, lowly instructor, even lowly full professors can't cancel classes. Only the powers that only the provost has the magic wand to cancel class. However, no class is worth dying for. Okay, so if they don't cancel class, figure it out. Okay, figure it out. I'll probably be here, it, you know, because we've got an evening class, but, um, and I'll come out and go, okay, good, nobody's here, and I'll try and make my way home. But for the most part, um, you know, even if we have a test or something, that um, we don't play with people's lives or insurance. Okay, anyway, okay, now, a ping ball, a ping pong ball, a ping ball. A ping pong ball is shot into a circular tube. Now, I've actually got something like I, I've got a thing like this. It's, it's a pipe hand. It's a three-quarter pipe hand. We shoot a ball bearing around it. I should have brought it in. But anyway, which path will it follow? Now, this is on a flat surface. It's, on, it's in the XY plane, like on the tabletop. All right, so it's not hanging. Of course, if it's hanging down, it goes straight down. But what, which way is that thing going to go when it pops out of that end? Is it going to go direction A, B, C, D, or E? B, not A, no takers on A, no takers on D, not, none of you saw the movie The Wanted, where they curved the bullets, that's so stupid, <laughs> trust me, 
I've been on the business end of rounds coming down range. Wherever they're pointed, that's where they go. Okay, there's no curving them. But Angelina Jolie can curve bullets, I guess. Wasn't she in that movie? That sounded like some silly she'd do. She makes three stupid ones and a good one. Three stupid, good. The stupid ones fund the good ones. All right, which nobody goes to see. All right, but anyway, um, so which path will it follow? F actually follow, what do you think? B. B, yeah. Because there's no more forces acting on it to hold it in, in its orbit. So for an object in motion, we'll continue in motion unless a force acts on it. It's got a continual force acting on it while it's going around, and then it doesn't. Okay, this one caused heartache this afternoon. This is the tension. Okay, the radius of circle two is twice that of circle one. So we gotta think, 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 think. The tension in the rope is equal to M times AC, where A was equal to what? AC was equal to um, R omega squared, correct? Okay, yeah, Brad's going, yeah, we got it. All right, so. The only thing, now, what are they telling us here? They're telling us that the period of the motion is the same for both rocks. So if the period is the same, what do we know about omega in both of these? It'll be the same. Because if, the, if it goes around the circle in the same amount of time, remember, a circle is a circle, whether it's a big one or a small one. Okay? So we're talking about 2 pi, the period, 2 pi, um, so it's going around 2 pi divided by t. The t is the same. So omega is the same. So r, ac equals r um, omega squared. So the omega squared stays the same. So the only thing that changes is the r. So you've either one's twice as big as the other. Which one is it? Yeah, this one has twice the tension. Yeah. Yeah. It's not B. It's D. Because, because this guy has twice the tension of this one. Because this one goes around kind of slow around here. This one covers the same distance. It's got to, it's got to go pretty quick. But its omega is the same. Its velocity is much different. Its velocity is greater. So if you think about it, it's got a greater velocity. It's, it's v squared. It's much bigger. Okay. That one caused... All right. This is a fun one. I think I told you all my first job, 1976. I was a ground squirrel at Worlds of Fun. Those are the people that swept up the stuff. Okay. What you didn't want to do, if you're the ground squirrel at Worlds of Fun, you did not want to work by the finished fling, which I think is still there, after lunchtime. All right. Get all these Nebraskans eating their funnel cakes getting on this thing, all right? You're like, why'd you do that? You know, I'm just joking. Okay, now I'm in trouble. Okay, so the Branson Tourist Board is going to call me. Omaha is calling. All right, but anyway, um, which one of these is which one of these is it? Which diagram correctly shows all the forces acting on this girl in the finished fling here? Or barrel of fun, as they call it. E or A. E or A seems to be pretty straight. D we can kind of throw out. Nothing's cattywampus here. All right. C looks compelling. Okay, so it's A or E. We'll get back to that in a minute. Now remember, these are the net forces acting on her, okay? These are the forces acting on her. So there's a frictional force that's keeping her pinned to the wall, all right, keeping her from sliding down, even though she wants to, see, as she's, as she's spinning this way, though, she, her body wants to go straight, so she's smashing into the wall. This is telling us this is her force pushing on the wall, okay? And this is the net force of the wall pushing her back, keeping her going towards the center. And then there's a frictional force working up in good old MG working down. Okay. The fact those walls are so frictiony, if that's a word, has so much friction, you can uh, they can almost drop the if you got if you're wearing the right kind of shirt, if you're wearing a Velcro shirt, you'll stay there. 
Okay. Which is stronger? Newton's third law. Which is stronger? Earth's pull on the moon or the moon's pull on the earth? C. They will pull on each other equally. Yes, just in opposite directions. That's supposed to be the moon over here. <laughs> this little thing is supposed to be the moon. I thought it was a petri dish of bacteria, but that's our moon. Which has, which has greater gravitational pull when you're on it, the Earth or the Moon? The Earth. The Earth. Yeah. That's why you know we could all be Tiger Woods on the Moon, you know, because it's only got one sixth, because it's only one sixth the mass of the Moon, so, and it's only got. It's, it turns out because of its smaller radius and its smaller mass, that it's only got one sixth the gravity of the Earth. So it's one point six meters per second squared. Yeah, so all those people on at University of the Moon, Kansas City, the pulley problem was mg was 1.6. Anyway, all right, sorry. Huh. Oh, this is fun. If the distance to the moon were doubled, then the force of attraction between the Earth and the moon would be what? One quarter, one half, the same two times or four times? We want you to say one half. So if you double R, where is R? Is it in the numerator or denominator? Denominator. So if you do 2R, parentheses, oh, it's not two times. 2R squared is what? 4R squared. So you've got a 4 in the denominator. Which one of these has a 4 in the denominator? A. It's 1 fourth. What happens if you triple the distance between the moon and the earth? What would it be then? One ninth. Quadruple would be one sixteenth. Those types of things. Okay? All right. Are we still? Oh, there we go. There's the answer. I didn't mean for the answer to be there. All right. Anyway. All right. You're 20,000 feet in the air. Flying at a constant velocity. We're not in the vomit comet. Did I explain the vomit comet to you all? It's the C-141 that you, that's what they call, that's what they train astronauts in. It's a C-141 aircraft with padded walls and you sit in the back of it and it goes really fast. It goes up over the horizon and falls faster than, and accelerates downward faster than gravity. So therefore, what does everything in there do? It floats for a minute. For a little bit, okay, and um, when that happens, you feel weightless because you've lost your normal force. You don't have a normal force anymore, and so you feel weightless, and you are weightless for the most part. And a lot of people get sick when that first happens to them. It's disorienting. But this one's flying straight at a constant velocity, so it's not ha doesn't have an acceleration. So. Would your weight, be, if you got on a scale on that airplane, would it be less or the same or greater than if you were on Earth? Think about where the R is again. Is this increasing the R or decreasing it? Increasing it, because that R goes from the center of the Earth up to the end. Okay. So what would you be, less or more? Less, quite a bit less. Well, not quite a bit. Just like if you want to go on a diet, move to Nepal. All right, you'll lose a couple pounds instantly because it's like forty-three thousand feet in the air or something like that. Not quite. All right. The moon does not crash into the earth because oh, this is a good one. Why doesn't the moon crash into the earth? Well, it's in the Earth's gravitational field. The net force on it is zero. No, it's got a, it's got a net force, a centripetal force heading towards the middle. Net in the ab oh, no, I'm violating my MCAT rule. I taught you all. Never pick a of the above, but however, except in this case. Why, is, why doesn't the Earth, 
why doesn't the moon crash into the Earth? Do you think? Dun, 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 dun. Okay, going back to the first question. All right, and I'll let y'all go because some of you are dying on me. It's been a long day, I can tell. All right, um, going back to that first question, you had the ping pong ball, right? Um, not a good example. Oh yeah, it is. Now, it, it'd be better if that ping pong ball is actually in a pie pan or a ball bearing in a pie pan going around the rim. And once the rim went away, it went straight. In other words, the moon is going so fast, it wants to keep going straight. It keeps wanting to go straight, but the Earth keeps going, uh-uh, 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 come back, come back, come back. And so that's why it's going in a circle. All right? Same reason why boomerangs work. All right? If you take a boomerang and you throw it that way, it cuts through the air like this, okay? And it's got a propeller that's kind of facing this way. Well, this is the way propellers work. The propeller works, it pushes air back this way. You got all this massive air back here, which for every action, equal and opposite reaction, pushes it this way, all right? So, when the boomerang's cutting through the air like this, it's pushing air this way, which is causing air to push it that way, so it goes in a circle. That's why they come back. Right? Same thing with the moon. It wants to keep going straight, but the Earth keeps going, whoops, whoops. So, because it's going fast, yes, and eventually it'll slow down and crash into us well, next week. I, I thought it was, isn't it actually going away? And if so, why? Yeah, it's going away. I mean, so There's all kinds of other forces. Right. Yeah. Well, actually, back in the dinosaur days, or even before, right about the dinosaur days, um, the moon was three times as big as it is now. It, was, it seemed a lot closer. And so, it's, yeah, it is getting further and further. It's getting slowly. It's because it's got kind of this, it's, I don't want to go any further. I'm going to, I'm going to ask Dangerous Dan McIntosh, our astronomer, what, why that is. Okay, let's look at the solutions real quick. If you want yourself on the, oh, okay. Yeah, you're going to be smaller. There you go. All right, so the last question, pick B, because you already did that in the lab. Now, let me go to the answers real fast, and we'll call it a day. How many questions were there? Eight? Okay, here's the solutions. Slideshow view show. Snow day question. All right, B was the right answer there. That's in the XY plane, so yeah, that's true. Okay, we figured that one out. That was a harder question because here, mv squared over r is 2r. I did it with omega, which I think they have the same period. Then v2 equals 2v1. All right. Oh, here we go. E looks more like this is what she's pushing on the because she wants to keep she wants to keep going flying off she wants to go this way that's her pushing on the thing but here here's the forces all right okay they pull on each other equally that's good old third law stuff one quarter, we figured that out because we knew where R was. If you square R, that makes this one fourth, or double R, then when you square that thing, it makes it one fourth. Less than, whoa, that can be any answer you want. It's actually not above. The moon does not crash through the earth because of its high speed. If it stopped moving, it would fall directly into the earth. Splash, okay. With its high speed, the moon would fly off into space if it weren't for the gravity providing the centripetal force. So that high speed that, that keeps edge inching, inching. Could be. That could cause all kinds of problems. In fact, I'll bring that information in for momentum and stuff. What actually wiped out the dinosaurs was the meteor hit crashing into us. Um, Kind of like that, remember that old Toyota commercial from just a couple years back where the meteor crashed, hit the Toyota? Anyway, those guys wouldn't have been camping. Of course, 
I have a problem with the Loch Ness monster eating the Toyota too. But anyway, that could never happen. All right. Okay. So go ahead and turn in that arduous quiz you just took, quiz ten, and um, go forth and prosper. If you have any questions on your test, uh, email me or, or we'll talk later.